So I've just got a speed of sound, 343.6 meters per second, which I'm pretty pleased with. And the funny thing is, I'm using my microphone, which is normally sitting on top of the camera, so sorry about the quality of the sound being not quite there. How I've done it, well, I've got a reflective screen over here, which is um, 0.8 of a meter away. So I'm just clapping these two, two boards. The first echo that the microphone receives will be from that board. And then just using Audacity to see the two spikes, zooming in and actually measuring the time. I've measured the time in numbers of samples and it's sampling at 96,000 hertz. So that's, you know, giving me um, a time base of one over 96,000 and it was 447 samples times one over 96,000 gives me the time being that, 4.656 times 10 to the minus three seconds. And then the speed distance over time is from there and back 1.6 over that value gives me that. So the percentage difference is very, very small. It's like um, a third of a percent or something like that, which is tiny. So I'm not happy with that as one result, so I'm obviously going to repeat my experiment. And what I'm just going to do is do a series, and then I'll have all that data in Audacity, and I'll be able to take several different echoes, make an average, and hopefully I'll get not 0.6 of a meter second off, but actually bang on. So here we go. Recording on there. So having done eight repeats, uh, I've got actually 353.2. Three, so I'm still not far off. I'm quite happy with that really. There's probably a couple of results that I could bin, but I'm not quite uh, as accurate as I was that just one go. So it perhaps was a bit of a fluke. That go was 400 and 47 so my timing is slightly too short i don't know whether that's my use of audacity and i'm not quite accurate enough with picking the very beginning of that sound that was the difficult thing because it was almost like a kind of smudge of a wave rather than a kind of exact precise point so we'd ra like rather have something that was a much shorter length of sound like maybe uh, tap into metal or something like that might improve these um, I'll just do that as a percentage difference. So essentially 3.0% different, not terrible, but not perfect. Which for kind of school lab conditions is not really a bad percentage difference. Um, I'm happy with that as being my repeatable kind of measurement. The fact that it's always been below the actual measurement tells me there's probably something else that I can do. Potentially my measurement of the length wasn't as accurate as it could have been and that skewed my results somewhat. So I've repatriated my mic to the top of my camera so hopefully you can hear the difference in the sound quality but uh, I guess I've wasted my money if not. Um, you've got to kind of imagine that sound wave from where I clicked it, it doesn't really matter where I did click it, it's going past the mic and then reflecting back to the mic. So no matter where you make the sound, the mic's always picking up as it goes past, and then picking up the echo as it comes back to it. So that's fine. Um, how am I sure that it's echoing off that? Well, it's echoing off everything actually in this room. It's quite an echoey room, really. And I saw that in the kind of like splodge of the sound after that first sound. But this is the closest surface to it and therefore I'm getting quite a um, discernible kind of second spike as that sound comes back. I'd just like to say, well, you could actually do this really quite easily at home. All you need is Audacity and a computer because you could use the microphone that's built into the computer. It might be the case, it might be the case it's more difficult to measure the length between the mic, which is normally up here by the camera, 
and whatever screen you're echoing off. And you do need a room that's kind of much bigger so you can discern that exact echo. I think if I was to do this again, I would measure that distance more accurately and I'd be looking for a sound which was shorter. I'd be looking for a sound which was shorter and it's easier to see the peaks um, on Audacity. This is actually a little bit of an adaptation of a method that my colleague was using with Year 8 where he was knocking um, a, a cymbal essentially and trying to time each knock with the echo that he could hear. So he was doing that off one of the school buildings um, and actually I've seen this before on YouTube um, by Bruce Yaney. It's a really good experiment if you want to get your class involved because you can take them all outside and you can time you can, they can all be trying to time that period you can do 10 full timings and they can measure the distance and you do speed of distance over time um, but this is would be quite a good demonstration it's quite a good one that you can do or if perhaps you're a GCC or a level student it's quite a good quick project maybe you can get closer than that three percent difference um, that I got but another video with another method of measuring the speed of sound and I don't think as I recall I don't think I got really much closer than this so there's two dissimilar methods, um, that one is a pretty hard one where you've got to use an oscilloscope and probably not for people below A level standards. I hope that helps, this has been Gorilla Physics, I'm all about you understanding more about your physics so you enjoy physics more, so you get more confident and so you can do better in those exams. Thanks a lot for watching.